Hi everyone, and welcome to this video where I'll show you how to undertake a multi-criteria decision analysis in Excel. Multi-criteria decision analysis, or MCDA, is a useful decision-making tool which allows you to make more objective decisions. It does so by allowing you to compare different options based on numerical scores. The tool consists of five steps. Firstly, we'll identify what the options we can choose from are. We'll then select the criteria to evaluate those options. Following this, we'll set the weights for each criteria item to assess their relative importance. We'll then identify scores for each option for each given criterion, and finally examine the scores and arrive at a decision. Let's go through each step in turn. In our fictitious example, we're considering a UK-based luxury car manufacturer looking to expand production. It has three options. Firstly, to move manufacturing to China. Secondly, to move manufacturing to Germany. And finally, to keep manufacturing in the UK. Let's assume that the company has provided a set of criteria that we can use to evaluate the decision. You'll notice that there's a column called level and a column called criteria. The purpose of the level column is to distinguish between whether a given criterion is a sub-criterion or not. For example, cost is level 1, while labour cost and fixed cost are level 2. In other words, labour cost and fixed costs are components of cost or total cost, therefore these are sub-criteria. Equally, quality consists of two types of criteria, reputation and labour quality. And finally, location is the heading, as it's level 1, and the sub-criteria are proximity to the UK and moving of UK jobs. The importance of having level 1 and 2 items will become more apparent later on. Now that we have the options we want to select from and the criteria we want to assess the options by, we can start assigning weights to each criterion to assess the relative importance of each one. We have the three headings, criteria, level 1 and level 2. You'll also notice that the level 2 criteria have an indent while the level 1 don't. This makes it easier to distinguish them. Firstly, we want to assign weights to the level 1 criteria. Since the company is a luxury manufacturer, let's assume it prioritises quality and places less priority on cost and location. To assign a number to it, Let's say the company assigns a 60% weight to quality and a 20% weight to cost and location. An important observation is that the weights for the level 1 items have to add up to 1 to ensure they're collectively exhaustive. Next, we can move on to the level 2 items. We know that the company places a 20% weight on cost, but which is more important, labour or fixed cost? Well, let's assume that the company is indifferent between the two and places equal importance on both. Therefore, we can assign a 50% weighting to each. Note here that the level 2 items for a given level 1 item must also sum to 1 to ensure that they're collectively exhaustive. Moving on to quality, let's say that the company prioritises reputation slightly more than labour quality, so we can assign a 0.6 and a 0.4 weighting respectively, and let's also assume that it prioritises proximity to the UK slightly more than moving of UK jobs, so we can attach the same weightings of 0.6 and 0.4. Note that these weights are completely down to your discretion, 
However, for this example, these are the assumptions we're making. Now that we have the weights, we can start to evaluate each option. In other words, we need to attach a score to assess how each option performs against each criterion. We'll only attach scores against the level 2 items, as these combined form the level 1 item, and our scores will range from 0 being the worst and 100 being the best. We're also going to ensure that for each criterion, at least one option has a score of 100 and one option has a score of 0. In other words, one option will always be best and one will always be worst. Let's start with labour cost. In our example, we'll assume that China is the cheapest option for labour costs, Germany is the most expensive, and the UK is slightly less expensive than Germany. So we can attach scores of 100 for China, as it's the best against this criterion, 0 for Germany, as it's the worst, and 20 for the UK, as it's only slightly better than Germany. Next, for fixed costs, once again, China will be the cheapest, so it gets a score of 100. We assume that Germany is slightly cheaper than the UK, so it gets a score of 20, and the UK is most expensive. Moving on to quality, we'll assume that the scores are equal for both reputation and labour quality, in that it's highest for Germany, which is known for its highly developed automotive industry, second highest for the UK, which will receive a score of 50, and lowest for China, which will receive a score of 0. Finally, location. China is the furthest away from the UK, so it receives the lowest score. Germany is quite close to the UK, so the score will be quite high at 80, and the UK is obviously the closest, so it receives a score of 100. For moving of UK jobs, UK will get a score of 100, as no UK jobs will be moved, and therefore this option faces the lowest risk of public disapproval. Germany and China, on the other hand, will both receive zero, as in both cases, UK jobs are being moved out of the UK. Now that we've attached scores to each criterion, we need to calculate the total scores. To do this, we'll use a weighted average, where we'll weight each score by its relative importance. In other words, for the cost criterion for option A, we'll take 0.5, which is the weight of the labour cost criterion, and multiply this by 100, which is the labour cost score, plus 0.5, which is the weight of the fixed cost criterion, and multiply this by 100, which is the fixed cost score. We'll then multiply all of this by the weight of the level 1 criterion, which is 0.2. Let's calculate this using a formula. First, we take the weighted average of the weights and the scores. To do this, we can use the sum product function. We open brackets and first select the array containing the weights. We then select the array containing the scores. We can then close brackets and multiply this by the level 1 weight. Therefore, for the cost criterion, option A has received a score of 20. To see how options B and C compare, we can apply the formula to those options. However, before we do this, let's add absolute references to the weights to ensure that these remain static as we drag the formula across. As you can see, option A has a higher total score than options B and C, 
because we attached higher individual scores for each criterion. Let's now move on to quality. Once again, we can use the sum product function. First select the scores, followed by the weights, and then multiply this by the individual level one weight. Before we click enter, let's also add absolute references. We can then drag this across. Interestingly, we get a higher score for quality for options B and C than we did for cost for option A, even though we assigned a score of 100 in both cases. This is because the weight we assigned to quality is three times higher than the weight we assigned to cost. And this really demonstrates the effectiveness of the MCDA method in considering the relative importance of each criterion. Finally, let's repeat the same process for location. Once again, we type equal sum product, first select the scores, followed by the weights, and then we multiply this by the individual level one weight Let's add absolute references. We can then click enter and drag the formula across. Now that we have all the individual scores, we can add them up. As you can see, option B has the highest score while option C has the second highest and option A has the lowest score. Therefore, the option to move manufacturing to Germany seems like the best option and is the one that we would recommend to the company based on our multi-criteria decision analysis. We can now move on to examining the scores. Here we can summarize the scores to show how each option performed against each criterion. We can extract the cost scores first, followed by the quality scores, as well as the location scores. And once again, we can add these up. This gives a more simple overview of the broad scores for each level one criterion. We can go a step further and create a graph which will make it easier to visualize the deviations. To do this, select the table we just made, then go into the insert tab and select the line charts icon. Finally, right click the line chart, click select data, and then click switch row and column. Now we've got a visual representation of how each option performs against each criterion. Now that we have all of these outputs, we can perform some sensitivity analysis. For example, we may want to change the weights of certain criteria. Let's say we want to consider the impact of lowering the weighting of quality and increasing the weighting of location. As you can see, option B still remains the highest scoring, but by a lower amount than before. Conducting a sensitivity analysis is useful to evidence that the decision you're proposing will be rational and accurate under different circumstances and situations. So that's how you can create a multi-criteria decision analysis in Excel. It's a great tool to make decisions objectively by allowing you to compare different options based on a numerical score. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for weekly Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.